There are so many moments where Mothra almost steals the movie from me. She's meant to convey a sense of awe and wonder that you don't necessarily have with the other creatures. I think Mothra will be everybody's favorite monster, at least in their hearts. She is pure good in a lot of ways, and her intention is to take care, to regenerate, to grow. Mothra was the biggest challenge because it was probably the most back and forth in terms of design to get it right. You want her to be feminine, but powerful. You want her to have a benevolence, but she's also badass. So visualizing all of that takes everybody working really hard to pull that off. to me in bringing these characters to life was to stay true to the original films. And there are certain traits that you have to embrace. The fact that Mothra hatches from a giant egg and her first form is a sort of larval caterpillar. She then enters a cocoon. She hatches from that cocoon as a full-grown, beautiful adult form. And in all the previous films, going back to her original debut, she was worshipped as a goddess. And so that informed how we went about her design. Mothra's a challenge because in the past films, she's essentially just a giant colorful moth. She's a giant moth, and it's like, how do you make that look cool and interesting? But if you go back and look at moths in nature, they're very diverse. They're beautiful animals. They're not the moths that typically fly out of your clothes in the closet. They're not just these ugly little brown specks. They're just as beautiful and elegant as butterflies. Because Mothra is one of the few female titans, she had to have a feminine quality. I wanted to come up with something that made her feel truly angelic. And so we brought in elements of bioluminescence, which is something that is found frequently throughout nature and seemed like the perfect fit for Mothra. She uses bioluminescence and different colors and brightness to communicate her emotions. Mike had that from day one. Like he knew that's what he wanted it to look like. I felt that Mothra shouldn't just be a moth that she should embody the traits of a lot of different insects. We did look at creatures like the praying mantis, because they're quite elegant, but they're also incredibly deadly. This might sound strange. I'm a huge fan of Mother Nature and insects especially. I mean, I, I hatch praying mantises every spring just for fun. And <laughs> praying mantises are beautiful insects. And so I wanted to embody some of the different traits that other insects have in nature, including different physical capabilities for defense or attack, longer legs, claws. I want to come up with something that was beautiful and angelic and powerful, but also deadly when she needed to be. Because if any animal is going to survive in a world filled with other giant monsters, like Rodan, King Ghidorah, or Godzilla, they would have certain defense mechanisms, which is why we gave her a stinger. Mothra's got a really interesting soundscape. It's of different kinds of insects. Something that we listened to as an example were the sounds of crickets that were slowed down exponentially to the point where when you hear them, it almost sounded like an angelic chorus. And I think she uses sound as a method of communication even more than the other creatures do. She has the most vocal range to me 
out of all the creatures because she goes through her own development from the larva stage to the beautiful butterfly or moth her vocalization changes along the way and she's the only creature that really gives an inviting sound whether it's the chittering the screeches there's something very pleasant and musical about the way that she sounds. You could almost put it on in the background as like zen ambient music if you wanted to. We wanted it to feel in some way like Mother Earth calling out to us. Mother, queen of the monsters. There's a very noble quality to Mothra. Unlike all the other creatures, Mothra had an intelligence and a sense of kindness about her. Said she was Mother Nature's protector. Every time she shows up in the story, it changes the energy of the movie. Everything becomes figuratively and literally brighter. I was already in love with Mothra before we started the movie. And then as it progressed, I only fell in love with her even more.